Hey everyone and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how to use the DALI model from the OpenAI API. So essentially what we're going to be doing is building an image generator, kind of like DALI, that's going to take a text prompt and then it's going to generate four images for us based on that text prompt. So super basic, super simple. We're going to be building this in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So essentially, this is a beginner video for those wanting to learn how to build their own things using the OpenAI API that powers tools such as DALI. Before we get started using OpenAI API, I want to quickly show you API Layer, a marketplace of curated APIs. Here you can find other APIs to incorporate into the app we are building. So for example, if you want to crop images smartly, I would simply find an API to do it for me. Let's go to the images section and let's incorporate this smart image cropping API to our projects that we are building if we want. We can test it out in the playground. So just go ahead and paste in a URL from the internet, put in an aspect ratio and run the code. And there we go. How cool is that? Now, this is a sponsored feature, so if you're looking for weird and wonderful or fully trusted APIs to create cool and unique projects with, API Layer is a great place to look. With anything from the Spotify API to social media APIs to food, you can even list your own API if you wish. Please click on the description link below if you're looking for fully trusted APIs to create cool and unique projects with. You don't need to give your credit card up front, and there is a free plan, so just have a play around just like I did. If you want to use a larger paid plan, there is a special discount code for you in the description below. So what are we waiting for? Of course, this is a front end project. So please don't go and publish this code with the API key that we will be using onto GitHub or share or anything like that. Because if you do, someone can take your API key and steal all your credits. Or, you know, if you have a credit card attached, they could potentially rack up loads and loads on your credit card bill. So please keep that API key safe. This is just for demo purposes. If you want to learn how to build out a more secure project, we will be doing that in another video where I build a front end and a back end to keep our API keys safe. So let's do it. Please do have the fundamentals of JavaScript down, but if you don't, please do carry along anyway and just fill in your gaps of knowledge later on after you finish this video. Okay, so let's do it. We're gonna build this core cool AI generator in JavaScript, HTML and CSS. So this is what it's gonna look like and then we can write a prompt and generate four images from it. And it's gonna have this cool background too, so I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So first off, let's just start a new project. I'm using WebStorm, so I'm simply going to click here and let's call this JavaScript AI image generator, just like so, and create. So that has created a directory for me in a directory called the WebStorm projects. And now I could just create a new file. I'm going to call it index.html. And then I'm just going to create another file, an app.js file. And now I'm just going to create a final file. It's going to be styles CSS, just like so. So there we go. There's our three files all in the same folder. And now let's link them up. So here is some boilerplate code for you. I'm just going to go ahead and call this AI image generator, just like so. Okay. And now in the body, oh well, that's where all my code is going to go, but I'm also going to link up the app.js file. Thanks for script type. That's going to be at the bottom. So after all our other elements get uh, read, then we go to the script tag and I'm just going to link up the app.js file that's going to read our JavaScript. So the script is going to read our JavaScript from this file. Next, let's also link up the style sheet. So I'm going to use the link tag for this. Uh, it's a self-closing tag. We'll do rel style sheet. And as the href, we're also going to put the path to our styles CSS file, which is just that, as we don't need to go any folders or anything like that. It's in the same location as this index.html file. So great, that is looking good. Now the background, I'm just going to show people how to do this, as a lot of people are probably curious. I'm just going to go to apphikey.app. So that's all I'm doing. And now we can generate our own wave, which is pretty cool. So I chose a layered wave. And then all I did was kind of, you know, play around with this, or you can just choose your own like that, or you can change the balance, the wave count, the complexity, which will go like, ooh, the contrast, the overlap, and just so much more. There's so much to do. And then you just download the SVG. And once that is done, you can 
open it up and then you inspect the page like so and then I'm just going to copy the whole element okay so that SVG right there so that's all I have done okay and now if we go back here I'm just going to in the body paste it so it is very long and that's what it looks like let's just open this up in our browser so I can go ahead and click here if I want if I am using WebStorm or if you are not you can just copy the path copy the absolute path and then paste it in like so so both things are okay to do great now let's get rid of the little like border around it and make the stretch right so let's do it so actually on here what I am going to do is the width and the height I'm just gonna go with using the width and height from here and then as the width here I'm just gonna go 100 viewport width and then this is going to be a hundred viewport height. We could have picked this out and done it in the CSS file. So that is totally fine too. And on here, I'm going to grab the body and just get rid of any default uh, padding and margin just like so. So then it should look like that. So that is much better now. So there we go. That's how you would use it. So that is how I like it at the moment. I'm actually just going to take the one I previously generated because I think I prefer it. But that is how you will get your one once you're happy with it, once you've played around with it. I didn't play around with this one that much and I just thought the other one looked cooler. So I'm just going to replace mine with the previous one that I made. Okay. And great. Like I said, it's super long. So yeah, I mean, not much difference, but I just think like that looks better. Okay. And now as the background, I'm just going to make it the same color as this last color right here. So let's find out what that is. In fact, I'm just going to inspect this. So the color for this is that. And now I'm just going to assign that to the body as well, just so that in case, you know, someone kind of zooms out like I did, then it just looks much better. I prefer that a lot more. Okay, let's carry on. So what is the next thing that we're going to do? Well, we're going to add some elements in here. So I'm just going to make sure I format that correctly. I'm going to next add a header. And that header, well, I'm just going to put the h1 element of Anya AI image generator. Of course, you can replace this with whatever titled you would like and then after the header I'm going to have one section and this is going to hold all my images so I'm going to give it the class name of images section and then let's have another section this one's going to have the class of input container just like so. And I'm actually going to put in the input here. Okay. And then a div and I'm going to overlap this div later on, which is why I put them both in an input container. And let's give this div the ID of submit icon, just like so. And I'm just going to put some text symbol in here. If you would like to use it, you can get it at this URL. It's just this little arrow that looks like this. So you can get it from here if you would wish. Okay, so at the moment, our uh, input and our title are showing up here. That's because we need to position some stuff and use Display Flex to center everything in here uh, in a much nicer way. So let's do it. So we are done with this for now. We are not going to put in any images because we're going to use JavaScript in order to do that for us. So let's carry on. Now we are going to essentially on the body. Well, I just want to make sure that everything is stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to initialize Flexbox so that I can use Flex Direction 
column. Okay, without this, I won't be able to use this. Next, I'm just going to set the width and the height of the browser. So view width is going to be 100% of the viewport width and the height is going to be 100% of the viewport height. Okay, and that means I can now use justify content center and align items center. Okay, to center everything to the very center of my browser. Again, I need to assign a width and a height in order for um, these to work properly. So now everything should be in the center just like so. Okay, and we want to disclude the SVG from this. So I'm just going to grab the SVG and I'm going to essentially just give it a position absolute top zero left zero. Okay, and I'm just going to make sure that it's always behind everything. So I'll just give it a Zendinx minus one or minus 10 to be sure, why not? Okay, great. So now that is in the center. Amazing. The other thing I want to do is just uh, maybe in the header this time, I just want to make sure that all font in the header is going to be white. So let's go with color. Let's go with RGB. 255, 255, 255. So there we go. So that is something that I have done. Great. Let's also assign a height. So I'm just going to hard code a height of 150 and I'm going to center everything in it by initializing Flexbox again. And now I'm just going to align items center. So this time it's going to center it on the opposite axis. So from top to bottom. So at the moment, it will look like that. Wonderful. So this is looking great. Now, what other things do I want to do? Well, I'd quite like to space out all the child elements of the body. So excluding the SVG, that would be the header and the two sections. And I would like them to, uh, the spacing to be even between them. So I'm going to use justify content space between. So on the body, I'm going to change this to be space between. So they are spaced out like so. Wonderful. This is looking great. The other thing I'm going to do is just change the font family on the whole body itself. And let's go with uh, Tribuchet MS. And as a backup, I'm going to have Sans Serif. So just one backup. So that will just change the text to be a little bit more uh, like this. Next, let's start up. So the images container, maybe let's leave that for now. Let's do the input container next. Okay, so let's do it. In fact, I think the input container, let's wrap it in another wrapper. So in fact, let's make a section and I'm going to give this the class of bottom section just so that we can uh, center this whole input container inside of it. So maybe let's change this to be a div instead. Okay, so there we go. So now if we look in here, the three child elements are the header, the section and this section as well. So let's pick out the bottom section. Of course, we are discounting the SVG as we've positioned that separately to the rest. So here, I'm just going to minimize that. I'm just going to grab the element with the class name of bottom section. And I'm just going to make sure that the width of it is 100% of the parent element. And let's also use display flex to initialize flex box so that we can then use justify content center to center everything from left to right. And I'm also going to assign this a height of 150 pixels as well. So there we go. There's our bottom section and there's our header. Again, header, bottom section. Wonderful. Let's work on styling the child of the bottom section next, which is the input container. So again, I'm just going to grab the input container by the class name. So the whole element that has the class name of input container. And I'm just going to make sure that the width is 100%. But I'm also going to give it a max width so that it stops at 650 pixels if we want it to. Okay. I'm also going to give it a position of relative. This is because I want to position the child inside of it uh, 
relative to the parent by using position absolute on it. So what I mean is, well, if we grab the item with the class of submit icon, and I give it a position of absolute, and I actually fix it. So let's go ahead and fix it to the parent. So the input container top by 10 pixels and right 30 pixels. Where do you think it will go? Well, here's the parent. It will go 10 pixels from the top of that blue square and 30 pixels from the right of it. So there essentially. Okay, great. Now let's also style the input itself. So let's grab the input and I'm also going to give it a width of 100%. So just like so. Maybe let's change this to be a bit smaller, so 600 pixels. I'm also going to give this a border of none as I don't want a border. I'm going to make sure that the font size in here is 20 pixels, so quite uh, large maybe or larger. Let's pad it out by 10 pixels. I'm also going to add a border radius to smooth off the edges and that's going to be of five pixels and I'm going to add some box shadow because why not? I'm going to go with RGB. Uh, let's go with this kind of dark color. So 38, 57, 77. Zero on the x-axis, 20 pixels on the y-axis, 30 pixels blur and minus 10 pixels spread. Okay, and at the moment it will look like this. However, I want it to be on the inside rather than it spilling over the parent. So for example, I'm just gonna show you, there's our bottom section, right? The input uh, container, which holds the input, they're spilling over the bottom section. So I'm going to use box sizing border box to stop that from happening. Okay, so now it is in the parent and looks like this. So much better. Let's also make sure that the header's width is also 100% so that it takes up the whole space. And now we can also center that title. So let's do justify content center. Okay, and wonderful. So this is looking great. Let's get to hooking this up with JavaScript next. So let's do it. So all I'm gonna do is in here, I'm gonna show you how to get your API key. So we're going to need to go to OpenAI. So just make sure to go to OpenAI and click on API reference. I've already got it up here. And now under here, I'm just gonna view my API keys. Now I can create a new key, sure. So all I'm gonna do is create a new key like this and that will get created for me. Okay. Great, and you're just gonna copy it and keep it safe, okay? You don't want anyone stealing this because they could use up all your free credits or rack up money on your credit card if you have a credit card attached to this. And you could, of course, delete them if you think yours is compromised or you just don't want them anymore. So make sure to do that. I'm just gonna save it here. So const API key, like so. Make sure it's a string. And I'm just going to remind you to not put this on GitHub, okay? Do not deploy this API key or upload onto GitHub, okay? This is just for personal use because of the issues that I said before. So there's our API key, we've got it. Now let's get to using it. So what I'm going to do is, well, first off, I want to essentially get an image if I write something in the input and click on this button, right? So let's pick out this button by the ID because we're going to attach an event listener to it. So I'm going to use document query selector. I'm going to look for anything with the ID of submit icon, just like so. And let's save it as submit uh, icon so that we can work with it in our JavaScript. Now, so I'm gonna get that and I'm gonna use add event listener. So listen out for clicks. And if we click on it, I wanna get images. 
Okay, so now let's define the function get images. So const get images, I'm just using a function expression. You can write function if you want. And what we're gonna do is try something and catch the errors if it doesn't work. Error. And we'll just console erroring the error. So that's all I'm gonna do. So if we click on that submit icon, so if we click on it, that's the event, we're going to call this function. At the moment, it's not doing much because, you know, we need to write this code. So what we're going to do is make a request. Okay, we're going to make a request to the DALI model. And that is to API references. And then we're going to find images. Okay, so this is what we need. It's a post request to this URL. So let's grab this URL. And now I'm going to use the fetch API keyword to fetch from this URL. I'm going to have to pass through some options in which we define the method, which is going to be post as we just saw. So const options method is going to be a post method. And next, we're going to also have to pass through some headers, right? Because we're going to have to pass through that API key. And we're going to do so. So we're going to write authorization. Make sure to spell that correctly. Authorization. And then we're going to do backticks as we're going to use the word bearer. But then also pass through that API key. So to pass through code or variables, we use the dollar and these two uh, curly braces. And then we're going to pass through the API key. So that will come back as bearer and this string with a space. Next, we're also going to have to define the content type because we're working with JSON. So content type, and then we're going to do application JSON. Okay, so that's what we have done. And then we're going to have to have the body. So the body, well, I'm just going to pass through an object and it's going to have a few things. It's going to have the prompt itself. So the string that we want to send to the AI. So like generate a cat or something. So we're going to put that here. Next, we're going to have N, which is going to be the number of images we want. I'm going to put four and then we're going to have to have the size. And the size of this is going to be where well, there's three we can choose from. If you look here, here are the options. Only the prompt is required, right? So the make us a cat. These are optional, but I divide N as four because I want four images and the size we can choose from these three. I'm just going to choose the biggest. You can have all these others, but you know, as a default, we are going to be returned the URL to the image. And I don't really care about the user being shown for that. So great. So let's put in this size as that is the options we need. And I'm going to have to wrap this through JSON stringify. Okay, so there's a method called JSON stringify, and then we're going to pass through this whole object through it so that it kind of JSON fies this for us. So there we go. Now the prompt, of course, I can write some text, but that's not very fun. I want to get the value from this uh, input, right? So let's go ahead and do that. There's only one input, so I'm just going to pick it out by the element itself. Document query selector, and I'm going to look for an input. Okay, and let's save this as input element, just like so. So now I can grab that input element and whenever we click on it, let's hope there's something there, right? Because input element and we're going to get its value. Okay, so when we click on the little arrow, we hopefully have something in the input element. Otherwise, you know, you're just sending an empty string. And then we're also sending through the amount of images you want and the size of those images. So great. So those are the options. So we're passing through the URL and the options as a second parameter. Fetch is an async function. So we need to use the await keyword for this. We need to await for it to come back. And as we're using the await keyword in here, this also needs to be an async function. So if you want to know more information on that, I do have some async await tutorials on my channel. So once that comes back, we're going to save this, whatever comes back to us under the const response. Okay, so we're getting the response. And once we get that response, we're going to get the JSON from it. But uh oh, this is also an async method, we're going to have to await it. So we're going to await that JSON and save the return under data. And for now, let's just console log data. So there we go. Let's check it out. 
So all I'm going to do is back on here. Let's go. Pictures of blue cats in the rain. And click. Let's get up our console log as well. Okay, so that is done. And we get four URLs. This is great. And if I get one of these URLs and put them in here, we get a picture of a blue cat in the rain. It's so sad. Wonderful. So this works. I'm also going to just add a cursor to this. So on the actual submit icon, I'm going to add a cursor uh, pointer just so it's obvious that we can click on it. So that, that should show up. Wonderful. So now let's get to using these URLs and mapping them onto images here. So let's do it. So I think once we get that data right, so if data exists, we're going to get the data from it because if we were to look in here, I'm just going to click on this again, a blue cat. Okay, and let's wait for that to do its thing. We want to just see what returns back to us so we can work with it. This is data. We then need to go into dot data, right, to get this whole array. So that's why I've gone data dot data. If data exists, we're going to go into data and get that whole array. And for each item in that array, what should we call each item? We can call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it an image object as that's essentially kind of what it is, right? It's a object that holds just the URL. So for each of those, I'm going to actually create an element. So I'm going to use document create element and I'm going to create a div. That's right. That's what I've done. And let's save this as image container because each of my images I'm going to put in a container so that we can kind of crop it out if it's too big. So now let's grab that image container and I'm going to give it the class list add and I'm going to create a class that is called image container. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. And once we have that image container, uh, we're actually going to put a another element, a, a uh, image element inside of it. So let's create it. Document create element image. And let's call this image element. And now let's grab the image element. And I'm going to use set attribute. So a JavaScript method is called set attribute to set the source. And then whatever the image object URL is. Okay. So I'm getting the URL and I'm essentially getting the image object and adding source equals the image URL. And now I'm going to get that image container and I'm going to append. So I'm going to put in that image element into it. Okay. And once that is done, I'm actually just going to pick out the whole image section by its class name. So let's do that. I'm going to do so up here. Const image section equals document query selector. And I'm going to look for something with the class of image section. So then I'm going to grab that image section and I'm going to append that image container I just stuck the image into. Okay, so let's have a look at what this looks like before continuing, right? So maybe let's get rid of this console log now. Go in here and a orange hot dog. Let's wait for that to do its thing. And great. So obviously we haven't styled it at all, but I'm just going to show you what happened. So this image is section, which at the beginning had nothing in it now has four elements inside of it. It has a div. We created a div for every item in that array, right? We created the div and we gave it the class list add of image containers. So we added the class of image container to it. Next, we also created an image element and we added the attribute, so set attribute of source and a URL that we were mapping over. So that's what we did. And then we put that image element in the element with the class of image container. And then we put that image container inside the image section. So we did all that with JavaScript, which is pretty cool. So now we have our four images and let's just style this up. 
So what I'm going to do is perhaps grab the, let's grab the images section. So let's go ahead and grab that. And I'm just going to say that the width of this whole section is going to be 100%, but also I'm going to set a max width and it's going to be 600 pixels. So just like our input. And now I'm going to use display flex to initialize flex box and I want everything to wrap over each other. So I'm going to use flex wrap wrap in order for it to do that. And then I'm just going to space out everything evenly with space between and also just pad this out by 10 pixels. Okay, great. And finally, I'm just going to do a few more things. So I'm going to grab the image container. So the thing that holds our image, and I'm just going to give it a width of 40% of the parent, so the image section. So each one's only 40%. I'm going to round off the edges with border radius. Let's round off by 15 pixels. Uh, let's hide any overflow. So if it's a square, the image is a square that lives inside of it. I want to hide off those edges. And let's just give it a box shadow. I'm going to go with RGB 38. 57, 77 as the color, and then zero X axis, 20 pixels, Y axis, 30 pixels blur, and minus 10 pixels spread. And finally, I'm going to say that any image lives inside of the image container, and let's just give it a width of 100%. Okay, great. Maybe let's change this to be 48%. I think 40 is maybe too small, and let's test it out. Just make sure that you know you are using the same quote marks everywhere just before sharing this with anyone. We probably don't need them here, so let's get rid of those. So we can do that. Just cleaning this up a little bit, and this should be small. So let's just change that also. And then just make sure that. If you are using hex and RGB, just try to make sure that it's the same uh, approach you use each time. So great, that is looking so much better. I'm just gonna change these out too, just to make everything a bit more consistent, rather than just me speed coding this through for you. Okay, and wonderful. And let's test it out. Let, what should we do? Let's do a rainbow ice cream. And wonderful. So I hope you've had fun building this image generator. Of course, this is just for demo purposes. We are going to be building the same thing, but with added functionality. So we're going to be building a Dali clone that will do this, but also allow us to upload existing images for variation in React with a Node.js backend, as well as using the OpenAI Node.js library next.